Modern scientists have made some astounding discoveries about the nature of the universe. But many of these so-called findings are subject to debate, especially those concerning creation and the beginning of time. That leaves many Christians with a tough question. Does modern science agree with the Bible? Astrophysicist Dr. Hugh Ross has spent decades uncovering evidence that shows how science supports rather than erodes the claims of the Bible. At the core of that controversy is the biblical account of creation. Was it seven days as we know it, or much longer? Well, your book, A Matter of Days, I tell you, it really made me think about a lot of things. But the first thing I want to discuss is the issue of the age of the earth. And there's two schools of thought. There's the young earth, uh, I guess, believers, and then there's the old earth believers. Can you share what young earth believers think and what old earth believers uh, believe in? Yeah, well, young earth believers uh, look at the days of creation in Genesis 1 as six consecutive 24-hour periods. They also believe there's no significant passage of time between the creation of the universe and the story of the six days of creation. And uh, they look at the genealogies in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11 as being exhaustively complete. And uh, therefore, they conclude that uh, the universe and the earth uh, are only six to 10,000 years old. Whereas old earth creationists uh, look at these days of creation not as 24-hour periods, but as literal long periods of time, where they point out that the Hebrew word yom has four different literal definitions, one of which includes a long period of time. They also point out that the verb structure in Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2 allows for a significant passage of time between the creation of the earth and creation day one, and that the genealogies in Genesis 5 and 11 are not exhaustive. And therefore, they would agree that humanity is relatively recent, but the earth and the universe are much older than uh, the existence of we human beings. Genesis 1-5 says, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and in the evening and the morning were the first day. So how do you fit, if we have a night and a morning, if you believe that the day was an extended period of time, was there a series of night and days within that extended period of time? Or was it just that one day and then it was just morning for the rest of the time? You understand what I'm asking? Yeah, I do. And it's something I noticed when I first gave Genesis a serious read at age 17, whereas in creation day one, Genesis 1-5, is talking about days and nights. So that's the daylight hour definition of the word day. You get to creation day four, it talks about seasons, days, and years and that's a 24-hour definition. And when you get to Genesis 2-4, it uses the word day to refer to the entire creation week. So there's your long period of time definition. And also surmise when the text says evening was, morning was. You see that for the first six creation days. Each of these creation days has a distinct start point and a distinct end point. Mm -hmm. And I was expecting to see that there was evening and there was morning for the seventh day. There isn't. Uh, when you look at the seventh day, there is no evening morning passage. And so I recognize that implies that we're still in the seventh day. And was able to see in Psalm 95, John 5, and Hebrews 4, three different biblical texts that all teach that we're still in God's seventh day. So that was the first piece of evidence I had that these days must be long periods of time and not 24-hour periods. In the book, you discuss how young earth believers, uh, their belief is that the sun was created on the fourth day, I believe right. it was. However, you allude to the fact that you believe that the sun was created actually before Genesis 1. If, if you believe that, does that affect the validity of Scripture in any way, shape, or form? Well, it's important not only to take the Bible literally, but to take it consistently. Genesis 1 is not the only biblical text that takes you through the content of the six creation days. Uh, Job 37, 38, and 39 do. And that, the content of Job predates that of Genesis. And so a lot of skeptics will critique Genesis for what it leaves out. And it says, well, the important details it leaves out are already covered in the book of Job. But Proverbs 8 and Psalm 104 are two other texts that take you through the content of these six days. 
And relevant to what's going on in creation day one, Job 38 refers to a period early in Earth's history when the clouds blanketed the earth and kept the seas dark. So notice in the book of Job is giving us the reason why it was dark on the face of the deep, Genesis 1, 2. It was dark not because there were no stars, there was no sun. It was dark because the cloud layer of the primordial earth was opaque and light couldn't pass through. Now, being a young astronomy student, I realize all planets the size of the Earth, with the distance they are from the, our star of the Sun, would begin with opaque atmospheres. Uh, the miracle of creation day one is God transforming our atmosphere from opaque to translucent. And notice the text says about creation day one, let there be light. It doesn't say that God created the light or made the light, it says let the light be. The light was already there. When God created the universe, he created stars. And so light was available throughout the universe, but it was dark on the surface of the waters because of that cloud layer. Then in creation day four, God transforms her atmosphere from translucent, where light passes through, but it's overcast, to where now the clouds break. And what does the text say? Let there be the great lights so they may serve as signs to mark seasons, days, and years. All this vastness that God created with the galaxies and the moon, the stars, where do we fit in, in, his, in the big picture of what God has done? Well, the big picture is we need the entirety of the universe to have a planet in which advanced life can exist. God literally created the vastness of the cosmos with its hundreds of billions of galaxies so we can have this one planet in which we human beings can exist and fulfill the purpose for which God created us.